on this beautiful Sunday morning service and a special reach out to Pastor Fran. We're so happy to see you. And of course, our dear family online, we love you and we pray for you daily. We believe God is gonna touch you this very moment. Just thank God that you can be with us. You might not be in the pews, but you're in our hearts. Hey, I've got some great fun things that are coming up. First of all, it has been completely amazing. Monday night Bible school. And a wonderful thing that's gonna happen this Monday is Pastor Kay Gordon is going to be preaching and teaching. Amen. She's my favorite. <laughs> and then also Dr. Leach will be there too. So it proves to be that it's going to be a wonderful learning experience and a great time of fellowship in the Holy Spirit. Also, our dear ushers, if you could pass out the clipboards because we are signing up for our ladies Christmas sweater party. And it proves to be a lot of fun. Every year we get together and we celebrate, we fellowship, we praise the Lord and we laugh and we eat and it's just a wonderful time. There are only 150 slots. So sign up as soon as you can. And this is a great opportunity to bring a friend, somebody that needs to be in fellowship and have their spirits lifted. And also on that clipboard is the harvest party. Hey, we're gonna take advantage of every way we can to get people saved. And this harvest party is a safe place for children, it's got a family environment. We're going to have a lot of food, games, prizes, wonderful opportunities.
opportunity. This also is a great opportunity for outreach. If you know a family in your neighborhood and you know that they aren't going to a church, they don't know Jesus, that night is the night that you invite them and get them here because who knows what little seed will be planted in their heart. And we're gonna see all of Vancouver, all of Canada, saved for Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Amen, amen. Well, you know what? This morning I was just praying and thanking God for this amazing opportunity for us to come and just tell Jesus how much we love him. And so I just thought the best way to open this service is for us to raise our hands and let's say it. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I just praise your name. I thank you for all your wonderful things that you have done for us. I thank you, God, that we can come together and worship you, give you our hearts, and tell you how grateful we are for the wonders that you've done in our lives. We praise your name, Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to Sing it as king.
here today lift your hands to God have faith in the Lord your God hallelujah yes yes oh lift your voices hallelujah faith right now. Glory. I'm rich. Oh, what he's done. Hallelujah. Lift your voices. Come on, everybody. Begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Sing a new song, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the promises of God overtake every situation, glory. There it is, hallelujah. God will inhabit your praise, hallelujah, hallelujah. The precious blood of the Lamb of God, hallelujah. 
Ulaman and Ramas and Ramash and Dego. Hallelujah. Fresh oil, fresh oil. Hallelujah. Shara Mama Kula de Ramas and Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, move. One more time, move. Hallelujah. Move by your spirit one more time. Hallelujah. Let the latter glory be greater than the former glory. Hallelujah. Shining in a must and in a mush and in a mush and day. Hallelujah. 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 Now begin to declare victory. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Victory, victory, victory. Hallelujah. The Lord, your God, is mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Shut up, I cursed and did a mush and did a mush and day. Hallelujah. 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 Just keep playing. Stay here. Everywhere there is an apathy on the earth. It's so easy to join the choir of the negative. And some of you sing wonderfully negative in baritone and bass. A few tenors, you're a little sharp sometime, but we'll talk another time about that. But to put on faith. Your flesh is burning, put on faith. You got a report that's more than you can bear, put on faith. Because God will answer faith. He doesn't answer fear. He doesn't answer unbelief. Hallelujah. So what if you're a little mentally ill? Come on, you're still going to make it. Come on, everybody. You're still going to make it. Hallelujah. You might just be a little imbalanced. That's all right. God's going to use you anyway. Hallelujah. I just feel so strong that God is going to fight this one for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That God Himself is going to fight this one for you. You got a barrage of words that came against your good intentions. You've submitted to those words. But God has another word. I'm going to bring you through this. God has a different word. It's not the word of the media or the doomsday. Someone's very troubled, 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 troubled. Part of it's shame over the real behavior of your son. No one's got a glimpse, but you know the truth. When people ask you, how's your son? And you blurt out your normal parrot response, but it's not good. The Lord was saying to you today, I am going to deal with him and I'm going to have him be who you know he's supposed to be. Now, how do you know this is a word for the Lord? Well, it's not for you if you don't believe it. So it might not be a word for you. It, sh it should have been, it could have been, but you won't get it. Only by faith. The Lord clearly told us, I, I knew this year would be a ride. I knew it would be a ride, but hallelujah, some of those, some of those wild horses become the greatest horses on the planet. Hallelujah. God gave me a word for this year, and it was faith. Not just faith to get something, but to have faith to make it through something. Faith. Yeah, I'm very aware it's below zero in here, so don't, don't worry about it. I, Hallelujah. But I, I feel I'm going to be so hot today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It won't matter. I'm very aware. And yes, the heater does work. Hallelujah. We just didn't know. We just didn't know that it would blow from Edmonton to here like this. Hallelujah. Look at somebody. There's a reason we live here and not there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You feel like the, you feel like the, your mountaintops have a little snow on it. When the, when the prophetic comes, listen, it has the final say. When it comes, 
those who want to sell a prophecy, that's not from the Lord. Those who want to rent a hotel in every city and have a group of groupies follow them and they have words for them, I want to let you know it's cult. But in the house, when the prophetic comes, it's a word not for somebody else, but it's a word for you. Hallelujah. My darkest moments, the only thing that kept me alive was the prophet of God, that I heard his voice from the throne of God in the darkness of my soul. And I said to myself, I'm going to believe that over my circumstances. I would not be in the ministry today, would not be here today without a true prophet of God, Pastor Dave Huber. Wouldn't have made it. Wouldn't have made it. My gifts, my talents, my incredible good looks. I'm going to pray for eyesight. I, hallelujah. My mom told me I was good looking. Hallelujah. And that man of God bought a word and he didn't know how hurt and dismayed and betrayed that I was. I said to God, I never want you to speak to me again. The pain of the delivery is more than I can bear. And I'll just preach good sermons, keep a good heart most of the time, but I do not want you ever to speak to me again. And Pastor Hubert called me with a voice from heaven and reached down to my darkness. Your best days are ahead. God had to break you to make you. And then he calls me a week later. You're not broken quite enough yet. <laughs> Say with me. This number is not a working number. What is wrong with this guy? And he had his own pain. He had his own battles. His own betrayals. But he kept that word alive. And I'm telling you, that word is in this place. And even though you want to give up, even though you're hurting, even though you say, I can't bleed this much, I'm bleeding to death. Even though you say what God has said has to come true, I'm going to make a declaration. Oh, it will come true. It will come true. I, I'm fully aware sometimes this is your church and I'm not your pastor. I'm not born yesterday. All right. I, I can look in your eyes. Well, Lord, bring number 20. Can you imagine this place has went through 19 pastors? Hallelujah. How many are thankful that I'm just not that bright? I don't know, but to show up. And now, let the weak say, I'm strong. I'm rich. Oh, what he's done for you. And now, come on, say it. in your life. I prophesy to you. Sing it. And now. God's telling you the truth.
I declare over your life that you belong to me, says the Lord. Your will isn't your will. Your desires are not your desires, for I have hand chosen you. And the Lord would say to you today, even the prayers you prayed and you've said couldn't come true, the Lord would say, you have not asked me for enough, for I would say unto you that you are my daughter and I'm in love with you. And you will have a breath from heaven fill your soul that you've never known. And you will declare all the days of your life, even as the man of God grabs your hand and declares over you. People will be delivered by your voice all the days of their life. They will come in and say, I am dead, my life is over. And the Lord would say that you will be one who resuscitates them by the anointing. For this day forward, you are a daughter of the anointing. And I will put everything in the natural around you and you'll be cared for all the days of your life. And you shall say in the house of the Lord, you're my God and there is no other. And I am yours, use me for your glory. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the power of God on this place. Left foot and right foot and left foot and another day and another day and another day and another day and another day, just do what's right before the Lord. You told me a little story about God's intervention on your life. I'm going to tell you a new story. It hasn't begun, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At times your days are long, but the Lord is going to use you and you will know what the blessing of God. You've had shouts and joy and, and the nighttime said, thank you God for what you've done. But the Lord would say that I haven't begun in your life. What you think is the end, the Lord was saying to you today is the middle. You're nowhere close to the end. And I declare the blessing and the power of God to come upon you in a supernatural way. Hallelujah. And your bleeding and your brokenness and your disappointment and your tears and your crying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I couldn't use you without that. And there is a besetting situation trying to take your body and the Lord would say, I am your healer. That you shall not be limited by that, says God. You shall not be limited. And this diagnosis that they've wondered about, it shall not happen to you. You hear the word of the Lord. For I am the Lord, your shield. I, I am the Lord, your deliverer. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, your God. And there is no other in your life. And let there be a fresh oil to come upon you supernaturally by the power of God. Hallelujah. I want those of you that have to think about it in the morning to keep breathing. You get up in the morning and you have to say, it's another day. The sun's dawning isn't your friend. It's a reminder of the failures of your life. But I want to let you know today that God won't fail you. You might have failed him. I've failed him a few times, but he's never failed me. You better hear this today. He has never, ever, ever came through when I've thrown tantrums and fits and mad and angry. I've even said to God, I've just said it, I said, I mean it, God, kill me. I don't care, kill me. And only as the Lord speaks to me, son, I wanna remind you, that's always an option. I heard God tell me that, that's always an option. There's a few times you came pretty close, hallelujah. I want everybody in this place right now to thank God you're alive. No, 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 thank God you're alive. No, thank God you're alive. Everybody in this place begin to thank God that you're alive. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. Not your problems. Thank God you're alive. Thank God you're breathing. Hallelujah. Thank God you're alive. You're in a time in history where we're going to see God as never before. Begin to thank God that you're alive. Hallelujah. Oh, quit being bitter and angry and resentful and judging stop that you don't have time for that right now be thankful that you're alive hallelujah the god thank you you've given me another day uh, another opportunity i praise your name jesus thank you i'm alive uh, hallelujah and i will bless the lord and his praises will continually be in my mouth oh the anointings in this place right now i'm alive 
I'm alive. I'm alive. Don't be afraid just to be here. Well, Pastor, what's next on the agenda today? Who cares? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We won't have you stand. Don't lift your hand. Ever have bow, head bowed. You had a plan to kill yourself. You can't face the shame, humility anymore. Don't do it. Don't do it. Surely I, the Lord your God, have made a way in your desert. You saw no way out. But God has made a way for you. You came in with tears and you're going to go out with joy. Believe just another day, another hour, another minute, another second. And I want to just declare right now, there, there's a heaviness on society. Just a heaviness. Some of you are a little older. Your money that you thought you had isn't worth as much as you thought it was worth. But I want to let you know. I just want to say it to you. Where in the word of God is a retirement where you have to have a certain amount of money at a certain time? The thoughts of man have caused you to evaluate yourself according to where you're at, according to man's plan. But today you have your health, you have your sanity, you have your life. You probably, if you quit working, you'd just be old. You're already a little grumpy. You'd be double grumpy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just thank God right now. I want you to right now just to thank God for right where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Get a little faith in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I know uh, some people, they come and they think, this is a little weird. Can I just be Pastor Shot Classic? This is not weird. You're weird. This isn't weird. This, this is how God speaks over his people. He, he lullabies. Hallelujah. He whispers hope into their soul. Glory to God. He causes their heads to go up. And the tears simply just stained your face to remind you that God intervened in your life. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us, hasn't he? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Has God been good to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll try to get, has God been good to you? Hallelujah. I don't want to get a little rhythm on. He's good in the bad times. Glory to God. He's good in the valley. Hallelujah. He's good when you get a report. Hallelujah. He's good when everything gets, comes against you. Hallelujah. He's good even when your ex-wife says you owe her more. I tell you, he's good right now. God's good all the time. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Hallelujah. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. I, I want to say it to you right now. He is a revival God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Revival isn't an, an event. Huh? A revival isn't having a special speaker come into town and then all of them just sudden declare, okay, we're having a revival. A revival is the will of God that's sustained by our response. Oh, by the way, the true apostle of prayer to the Philippines, he has 14,000 prayer warriors, is coming to Glad Tidings. The true apostle of prayer. I'm not talking about Willy Wonka that lives in Manila. I'm telling you the real one, the real humble. And I asked Pastor Leach, and he said, I'll call him. He said, he'll come. I said, good, get him here. Hallelujah that we're going to bring in some 
apostolic, prophetic. I called Dr. Bagwell. He's the second greatest prophet I've ever known compared to under Pastor Hubert. He said, I'm coming. I said, I'll warn them to get right. Let me say this. Oh, Pastor, I want a prophetic word. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now oh, God's in this place. How many know I have a, just a really good 30-part sermon? How many here are just open for God to move? Come on. You know, you, you want revival until I take away what you do because you're in the wrong place. You're all huffy and puffy. It's American. You all want revival because I know how to let Lay it out. I know how to lay it out. You want revival until you know that won't work. No, that's wrong. Hallelujah. You know, God didn't bring me here by accident. We needed an apostolic father who would put everything in divine order. Now, let me tell you, how many want revival? Let me see your hands. Wonderful. Less than that used to want it. Praise no matter what. They sent you home to die and you praise him. Praise no matter what. The garment of praise no matter what. Number two. Real prayer. Not the Lord be with you. May his grace be upon you. May it shine upon you. No, it's Ilabashantirapasante. Come on, everybody. It's Holy Ghost prayer. Real prayer. It's not this kind of prayer. Shit about a Honda. Shit about a Honda. It's real prayer. It's real prayer. Come on, everybody. It's heard in heaven because the prayer is on the earth. Real revival is by exuberant giving. Huh? Real giving. Not tipping, giving. My grandson walked by a table, we took him out to dinner, and he said, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and he grabbed this money off the table. He said, Pa, you told me if I would tithe, God would bless me. I just found money in that table. I said, oh, God's so good. You're wonderful. Just go out, be with your father and your mother, and I'll be right there. The waitress comes back. Hey, I had a tip here. How much was it? She said, it was $8. Here's 20. Hallelujah. Next thing, missions. Missions. Who will stand with me in faith, but we shall give a million dollars a year to missions. No, not hyping, not hyping, real, real mi million dollars a year to missions. We might hit two, 250 this year. I don't know what we're going to hit, but just a million dollars. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Jesus. Open your hearts, everyone. And now. I'm strong, Jesus. What is 
done. Yes, come on, push it, everybody. And now. the Lord. Let someone praise the Lord. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. No, no, no. Somebody praise the Lord. Holly, come on, somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Breakthrough. something that changes the course of your life going forward and ensures that things will never be the same again. Breakthrough. I said breakthrough. Point at someone and say, God's going to give you a breakthrough. Come on, everybody. Point at someone. God's going to give you a breakthrough. Let me put a little hip street on it. Hey girl, what's up? You're going to have a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to have a total bling bling. God is going to do something he's never done in your life before. I kept having breakthroughs. Listen how crazy this is. I'm locked in the States. Canada's under siege. I'm the pastor here for three days. COVID hits and the Holy Spirit said, I'm gonna put you on national television across the nation. Huh? Say it, huh? Lord, I've only preached twice there very well. I wanted the numbers to go up in the viewership, so I watched it 500 times. I said, there's chaos all through Canada. The thing is out of control. Yeah, anyway, I want you to go on television. I don't know any television places. 
What channel Scooby-Doo on? I don't know. I looked up and I saw this station called Joy TV. Or said, call them. Okay. So I really put on my good preacher's voice. They were kind of short on money and the general manager answered the phone. Good man. He said, how can I help you? Well, I'm Pastor Vince Schott from Glad Tidings for three days. Third day at it. I said, how's the cash flow? He said, not overly good right now. Not everybody's buying airtime. They're trying to buy food. I said, okay, well, here's what we'll do. I want to buy a year's worth of airtime. I want to do 30 second commercials, which I know producing is 27.5. And I'd like to go on real soon. I said, how's the cash flow? He said, well, it's not real good. I said, here's my credit card. He said, well, I got to see your product. I said, I'll have it to you in two hours. I'm in a studio, the studio that I own, produce it. He said, wow, that's really good. I want everybody to have fun with me. Just love on me for a second. Say it with me. Duh. Come on, everybody. Help me out right now. Duh. I said, can we start by this weekend? He said, Pastor Sean, I'm so happy you called. Now, you're, you're at Glad Tidings. Is that right? That's over in Frazier. Yeah, I'm the pastor there. Been there three days. Just hear this. It's a breakthrough. I'm going to say that it's a breakthrough. No, it's not for Pastor Shot. It's for us. Some of you don't understand it. It's a breakthrough. It's a supernatural breakthrough. I gave him my card. I never asked for the money back, by the way. I couldn't see it because I'm in the... And I had some of the trustees and different people text me. Oh, Pastor, I saw you on television. Now, this is not what they said. You're so good looking. Now, somebody can yell like that in the church. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. And pastors from Canada started getting a hold of me. Now, how long have you been at Glad Tidings? Three days. That's a breakthrough. God will cause kings to say yes to you. We'll try it again. God will cause a company that says we can't serve you, serve you anyway. Proverbs 21.1, look, that I, the Lord your God, will cause a king to turn his heart towards you. I will shift the water course and the dreams of your life. What God's put you on the earth before, the problem is you don't have any water on it and it can't produce. And God will cause what? The river to be a water course that will turn your way. That's what God will do. The king's heart in the hand of the Lord. The king's heart is the hand of God. Who's the king's heart? Presidents, people in power, people have money. One of the men in the church started a business. He had to, because where he worked, didn't want him anymore. God, what am I gonna do? I have a family. The number one supplier said to him, hey, we'll carry you, bud. People start calling him, hey, we want you to do business. How many need a breakthrough where it says in the Word of God, the king's heart in the hand of the Lord, like the rivers of water, and it turns every way he wants it. And anybody here need some things turned your way? Let me see. Anybody here need a breakthrough? Somebody help me in this place. Anybody here, the no's become yes. The shut doors become the open doors. Uh, they wouldn't even give you the time of day. And God just causes this thing to go your way. Pastor Calvin, the attorney, 
on my staff, I'm at a staff meeting and the Holy Ghost says to me, you need to start a business. He looked at me, are you firing me? No, no, I'm not firing you. I should. I said, there is a gentleman that wants to retire that's calling out to, to God. He said, okay, I'm gonna believe. I'm gonna believe. Two weeks later, he's at this place and heard about this guy owned a tax business. He said, I just, I just wanna be done. Can you pay this amount? You can pay it over eight years. Can you do this? Can you do that? He walked into a half million dollars a year just because of a king turning his way. Somebody help me in this place. Hallelujah. And I wanna let you know his wife liked him better. <laughs> she cooked better, called him her Lord. This isn't for somebody else, this is for you. God can cause a, a king to come your way. Young people, if you don't hear this word, you're gonna end up at the second window at Burger King the rest of your life. You're gonna be having handouts and crossing your fingers. You better hear this word. How many need a breakthrough where God gives you favor that you don't deserve? Something comes your way you didn't earn. It wasn't because of your education. It wasn't because of your charisma. It wasn't because of your drive. It was because of the Lord God Almighty. He's gonna to begin to speak to you. Well, Pastor, I really like Dona House. But Vancouver is so expensive. Then live in <laughs> the Arctic. You can get some real ice for a great price. If you want a cheaper house, I hope nobody's from this place. Then move to Hope. You'll need it. Or believe God right here. I said, or believe God right here. Bust in my rear. Got five kids, only wanted one of them. We needed a house, got a family. I see this misprint in the paper. The house back then was probably worth about 400,000. It said $69,000. I called him. I said, hello, this is Pastor Shaw. I'm looking for a house. I read this thing, $69,000. He said, yeah, that's what it is. Huh? It was like in a neighborhood that didn't have dogs with chains on it. I, I said, can I see it? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, probably the only thing, it's really a nice house. The only thing you won't like about it is, is peach. How many love peach for $69,000? I went over there. I said, I, I, I'll, I'll buy it. Well, you want your wife to look at it? No, she trusts me sometimes. We li either live in this one or with her mother till I'm 80. And I said, how come you're selling it so cheap? He said, oh, I'm the owner of Seattle Coffee and it wasn't making it. And the government said, if I make any more money this year, I have to pay tax on it. So I thought I'd just help somebody out. I said, yeah. Good idea. I said, good idea. Someone say with me, yeah, breakthrough. Somebody in this place, is there anybody in this place that just needs a little help? Is there anybody in this place that just needs a little breakthrough? We're not talking about you being the premier of Canada. We just need a little break. How many of you got a few breaks this last year? Let me see your hands. You just got a, a few little things came your way. How many could say it could have been uh, a lot of nights without sleep if God didn't help you. I'm gonna prophesy this word over you right now. 
And you're gonna leave here today in the house of God with a different expectation. You're gonna say, I am a son, I'm the daughter of the God of breakthroughs. I'm the son and I'm the daughter of the God of breakthroughs. He identified himself, let him know, I am the God of breakthroughs. It's in the Word. And then there are certain places all through the Bible that were places of breakthrough. I want somebody to stir yourself up. You happen to be in one of those places. Hallelujah. He's the God of breakthrough. And this is the place of breakthrough. Well, where's that? In the Bible. You'd come to the Bible school, you'd know the Bible, the whole thing. That's the guarantee this year. First Chronicles 14, 11, his name. He identified himself. First Chronicles 14, 11, the Lord of breakthroughs. That's his name. Second Samuel 5, 20. It says this place is the place a breakthrough. I don't care if you're from Great Britain. I don't care if you're from Singapore. I, I don't care if you're from the Philippines. I don't care if you're from Germany. I want somebody to say, that's a word for me. Hallelujah. That's a word for me. My children need a breakthrough. My grandchildren needs a breakthrough. My church needs a breakthrough. Hallelujah. My family needs a breakthrough. I don't want to be too theologically deep with you, but Jeremiah 48, 11 is a very interesting scripture speaking to Moab. It says, you taste the same and you smell the same your whole life. Wow. It's not saying you're bad. You just taste the same. I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling. I don't want to address your hairstyle. But if you have a mullet, if you come today with a mullet, I'd like to talk to you directly after the service. Don't want to hurt anybody's feeling. If you have the same toupee you had in, when Pastor Reginald Lizelle here, I'd like to talk to you directly after the service. I need some men to bow down to me a second. I'm gonna look on the top of your head, okay? All right. Church girl, I don't wanna hurt your feelings. But if you have the same dress you bought for Easter in 1979, I wanna to talk to you directly after the service. It, it says you never change, ever. You smell the same, you have the same complaints, yell at me, the same gripes, same problems with your husband, a new one, but same problems. Same complaints, same, same aches, same difficulties. Is there somebody here that needs a breakthrough? That you don't want to taste the same and smell the same. I, I know you love your Old Spice, but if you wear Old Spice, I want to talk to you after the service. How many girls this next year want to do a new do on your hair? Come on, somebody. You want to have a new do on your hair. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Change something. If you got a hearing aid, there's nothing wrong with it. But pimp it out a little bit. Come on, get, get a new hearing aid. Just have something sticking out right there. And it's purple. And it goes, yes. <laughs> Same problems. Same situations. Same complaints. My cousin died. My other cousin called me, wonderful man. He said, my brother imagined problems that he didn't have his whole life. Huh? He said, he just imagined problems and 
Went around and around and around and around until he ended up in a rest home and couldn't remember his name and died. Is there somebody here that doesn't want to smell the same? Come on, is somebody here? Hallelujah, hallelujah. How, how many here don't want to look the same? Hallelujah. I'm going to let you know right now, if you got a comb over, that's fine with me, but comb it the other way for a week. Come on, church. Do you need a breakthrough today? I said, do you need a breakthrough today? God giving you a break. Look at your little baby right there on the drums. She's, this, she's, she's the craziest, most wonderful lady. We had a very difficult song, and they thought, oh, she can't do it. She can't do it. And she puts her hands in her hips. Oh, I'll play it. Come on, somebody. I'll play it. No, the rhythm's too difficult. And, 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 and I said, oh, let her play it. Let her play it. Let her play it. And she, I'll play it. Three in the morning, she's at home practicing. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Someone broke into the church. We didn't know who it was. Now we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a breakthrough. Say it out loud. I can do it with God's help. Say it. I can do it with God's help. Come on, somebody. I can do it with God's help. It might not look like anything's going my way, but I wanted to make an announcement. It's turning my way. Love Canada. Love it. Love the people. Love the nations. There's not a street that I don't walk down that I hear a dialect from another nation. I absolutely love it. I even saw one brother. Yo, pastor, what's up? Is he on television? Hallelujah. How long have you been in glad tidings? Three days. See, these aren't stories. These are facts. These aren't illustrations. They're anointed declarations over your life. When it's impossible, God is the God of breakthroughs. We're coming into this service. That was probably the cutest little Filipino girl I've ever seen in my life. I mean, we're talking about cute. Made my whitey white grandchildren look ugly. This kid was so cute. And what even her, her mom decked her out. She's in all the right things. And then what makes them really cute when they're one and a half and two is their bellies hang out. They don't care. Now, all of us try to hold it in for, for an hour and a half, just hold it in. But this little belly it didn't care. She just had a bottle and it was a full belly. And her mom said to Pastor Jody Ann, this was the baby in my womb during COVID that God gave to us. In the worst time, God's doing something inside of you. In the hardest time of your life, and I'm telling you, this kid is cute. How many know a baby is cute when their hair is long and they have so many different bows in their head, their neck hurts at night? That is a cute baby. Hallelujah. He's the God of breakthroughs. He's the God of breakthroughs. And you're looking at something that can't happen. You're, you're looking at something that's impossible. You're looking at something. You're looking at your age. Quit looking at your birth certificate. I want to make an announcement. It's a misprint. Girls, it's a one time in your life. Lie, girl, lie. Say this, come on girls. Well, how old do you think I am? Come on, somebody. He's the God of breakthroughs. Now I'm gonna just come after you for a moment. You smell the same. You taste the same. You complain the same. You're hurt the same. You're wounded the same. Or you're gonna have a breakthrough. You can have a breakthrough. My son called me. Dad, how did the service go? Phenomenal. Dad, tell me the truth. What was your favorite part? Oh, by far it was me. <laughs> he goes, Dad, you're off. You're mentally off. But they don't know it here. They don't know it. Many of them are suspicious. Suspicious. 
No, really, what was, what was good? He said, the hearts of the people. Purity on the worship. Dad, are you moving back to the States? Nope. I ditched you suckers. <laughs> Change your name. Go from shot to Shotzi. I have an assignment here. I declare this house will be a house of the latter rain. I declare this will be the place. Solomon was just devastated, had no strength. First Kings 1.1, 1, 1, look what it says. And the king was old and cold. Look at it. First Kings chapter 1 and verse 1. The king was old and cold. It says he couldn't get warm. Today, pastor, what's, what's racist mostly in the church? Well, I'm looking around, it looks, it's blue today. What do you mean blue? We're frozen. I'm sweating and you guys are all cold. It says this, the king was old and cold. Look what it says. And he couldn't get warm. But inside of him, he had declared some promises that will never come true. Many years ago, God spoke to you, but now it's old and cold. How many want to get it alive again? It, it declares. First Kings 1, 5 and 6, Adonijah exalted himself and is good looking. He exalted himself and he's sitting on the throne of what God said he was going to do for you and it's not happening. Look at the word. Adonijah got people to shout, did a campaign. It appeared it was over. Some of you here, you're here today and it appears it's over for you because look. A godly woman wanted this little condo and it sold. She never asked for anything. She just wanted just a little condo and it sold. And the man went by it every day and declared with a sold sign on it, this is the condo for my wife. You don't get it. It was sold. This godly man would drive there and say, I declare in the name of Jesus, this condo is for my wife. Six weeks into it, he called the realtor and it was sold. And the realtor said to this person, I don't know what happened, it fell through today. I wanna let you know someone's on your throne and it's gonna fall through. I wanna to say to you right now, something is sitting what God said he would do for your life and I wanna to declare to you right now, somebody help me in this place. I wanna to declare to you right now, you need to say to them, you're gonna to have to move yourself over. They got the miracle condo. David was old and cold. Adonijah exalted himself, he was very good looking. But he forgot two things. It's found in verse eight. Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet. Some of you don't understand this, you, you, you don't get it. When God says he's gonna do something in your life, you have to get two things for you. Even though someone else has taken your place and it doesn't appear that it's gonna happen, you have to have a pastor and you have to have a prophetic. Better hear it. Well, this is self-serving. So you're saying they have to have you? Wait a minute, let me look around. I'm not sure if I want you either. It's a two-way street here. Not a one-way street. I had a guy comes once and he said, well, I, I really don't like you, but, but I want you to know that 
I think this is going to be my church. And here's what I said to him. It can be your church. But I'll never pray for you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Not going to have attitude. How many are not going to have attitude? Come on, how many are not going to have attitude? And when the house blesses you, planted in the, you will flourish. I've had numerous people in the last six months say, oh, this is my church. This is my church. Numerous, not one or two. This is my church. Hallelujah. Right there, I just declare right now, glory to God. Hallelujah. We've got the priest on your side. And then it says this. Look what it says. It says it in the Word. It declares this. Nathan the prophet. I love Nathan the prophet. Because he just said crazy things. You're the man. How many want a prophetic word that says, sit up, be quiet, quit pouting. God's hand is on your life. Is anybody here just love to be slapped? Put your hands up. I'll go back to Pastor Hubert. There's a few times. Well, then God's just finished with you then. And I lied to him. I said, I'm just joking. God always has somebody else. You see what happens when you live in Chilliwack? You don't care about fashion and style, what anybody said. He just blurted it out. He told me he was at a church once. He's prophesying over people. And he, he grabs this guy. He said, I don't want to say this publicly. And they all were kind of looking at him. Oh, say it. We want to hear it. No, it's, pri it's a private thing. You're cheating on your wife. Your hands are lifted. You say they're all, all right things. But God can even turn this around. How many want a prophetic word when you have a problem? How many want a prophetic word when things are going your way? How many want a word, God? How many don't have to always say it like you want to hear it? How many want to hear it like God wants to say it? Glory to God. I've had some of the greatest, hated them, saved my life. Speak to me. Tell me things. Warn me. I didn't like it. Come on, everybody. Help me right now. I don't like it. Don't talk to me that way. Don't you know who I am? I'm a nobody who was going to hell that Jesus came and washed my sins away. That's who I really am. When you guys voted me in as a pastor, glad tidings, I just want to make an announcement. The angels didn't go, hallelujah. They could care less. How many today would say with me, I need a priest. I need a prophet. Then it says in verse 11, so beautiful, Bathsheba. Verse 11 through 18 is phenomenal, Bathsheba. It's an intercessor, it represents the intercessor, intercessor who does not forget what God promised. And when God promises something, the greatest danger is we forget. But intercession, what it does, listen to this. It says, did you not say, help me in this place, hallelujah. Did you not say, did you not say? And how many have heard some things from the Lord? Let me see your hands. Just to, come on. You've heard some things. God's given you some promise. Oh, just take a moment and yell, yell in the house. Stand to your feet and just yell, you said it, God. Come on, somebody. You said it, God. Uh, you, that's right. You said it, God. I didn't say it. You said it. You promised, God, that you would fill this house with your glory. And they'd come from the north and the south and the east and the west. You said you would bless the business. Uh, you said you'd make a way when there wasn't a way. You said you'd deliver me. Hallelujah. Glory. Be seated. You said it. <laughs> I had some relatives that were just weird. I had relatives that were weird. How many have re weird relatives? 
Anybody here have an uncle aardvark? How many had relatives that ate with their hands, which is fine, but they thought their shirt was a napkin? How many had some weird relatives? Anybody have weird relatives? And the Lord began to remind me, not only will you be saved, but your entire house. So I had to open my mind and heart, do I want to see them ever again? I'm going to heaven and they're coming. I've been witnessing to my cousin for 50 years, 50, 50 years. And he finally really heard about the real Jesus. His other relatives, he had a, a mentally ill son and his relatives, his other relatives would gather a group of people from their cult and try to exude the demon out of him. He wasn't really interested in our God. He didn't really want to hear about our God. They spiritually abused his son. And I talked to him on Thursday. And this wonderful man, there is no doubt in my mind. See, I found out that his grandmother was a Holy Ghost talking woman from Sweden. And he told me this. He said, when I went into the house, for his parents were divorced, and I was a little boy, I felt the real God. She cried for her grandchildren. And I guarantee you, my cousin's getting born again. There is no doubt he's getting born again. Let, let me try. How do you know that? Believe on the Lord, not only will you be saved, but your entire house. God, did you not say, somebody say, God, did you not say, somebody here needs to stand on what God says. God, did you not say. I'll just take it. Did you not promise? Did you not say? And then it says in verse 20, the eyes of all our Israel are on you. You see, King David represented the promise. He stood for the promise of the kingdom. And a statement was said to him, God, I want to see your glory. I want to see you, God. I don't want to hear stories. I wasn't here in 1948. Believe it or not, I wasn't even born. And I love the stories. But I want to see it. We'll try that again. I want to see it. I want to see it, God. I want to see the glory of the Lord. And then it says this, verse 28 to 30. Then King David answered. King David answered. King Jesus is going to answer people today. Today's going to be a little different. Because I declare that I serve the God of breakthrough and this place is the place of breakthrough. You're so afraid it won't happen again. You're so afraid that you stir your faith up and it won't happen. Stir it up. Because the King will answer and declare over my life breakthrough. 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Kings chapter 2. And David's son, Solomon, was put on the throne. But here's what it says. He was firmly established. Permanent. Firmly. Is somebody here tired of building your life on sand and broken promises and you believe God to make it firm.
Glad tidings is the will of God. I was asked to go to a little pastor's gathering. One of the pastors came up to me. He said, that place is anointed. He pastors somewhere else. He said, I, I came to a meeting they had in the hallway. The Lord spoke to me and said, quit your career and go in the ministry. He said, when I walk into this place, I hear God. Now, I, I, I know this place has been graffitied. I know they've thrown things at it. I know they've lied about it. I know they've cursed it. I know they said, we sold it. A neighbor said, hey, when are you tearing it down? I, I, I know it was out of money. I, 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 I know that it wasn't gonna make it. I, I know that all these minorities took over the church. Somebody help me this place. All I know is these minorities are the greatest people I've ever met in my life, hallelujah. Love God. Educated, smart, capable, competent, and they say, yes, pastor, are you kidding me? Come on, white people, help me out right now. No whites allowed. <laughs> Come on, someone said, <laughs> glory to God. Reverence and respect, honor for the house of God. But God says something else. I have firmly established glad tidings for my purposes, for my glory, for my honor, for my prophetic, for my missions, for my prayer, for my songs, for my prophetic songs. And here's what will happen. 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 15. Adonijah had one more speech. One more speech. And he looked at the face of Bathsheba. He said, you know, I was the, the king. But things changed. Huh? But things changed. You know, I was in charge. I was large. I, I was a man. I sat in the throne. I had people yell my name. But he looked the mom in the eyes and said, but things changed. Someone say, prophesied over me. Your enemies will say, what happened to you? This God that we mocked you for kneeling down to and serving. Boy, things have changed. But things have changed. If you'll step in this anointing right now, and I want your enemies to be able to say over your life, look what the Lord has done with you. And things have changed. Hallelujah. And I declare over you, God's going to firmly establish you. If there's somebody, oh, by the way, ushers and trustees, I forgot about the offering. Don't worry about it. They're all going, oh, I want a pastor, a pastor. Pastor has raised $100 million in the ministry. I haven't really forgot about taking offerings. God, you're so good. Thank you that I'm alive. Stand and just say, God, I thank you that I'm alive. God, with all my heart, I thank you that I'm alive. Lord Jesus, I thank you I'm alive. Oh God, thank you that I'm alive. Somebody just begin to thank God that you're alive. That you're not dead, you're not wiped out, you're not destroyed. You're not mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. You haven't been cut off. You haven't been thrown away. The God has allowed you to be alive for the greatest time in the spirit of the realm of the outpouring in history, and you get to be alive. Hallelujah, you're alive. I want you to thank God that you're alive. Begin to thank God that you're alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you.
I love you. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. I'm rich Oh, what he's done for us And now, oh, glory Hallelujah I'm rich Ushers, go ahead and take your place. We don't need a sermon about giving. All the ushers, take your place. Just hand out to everybody an envelope. Everybody wants an envelope. Over here, ushers, wake up. Right over here. This far side, over here. There's an anointing in this house. When the presence of God dominates, that's called old school. And how many love old school? The worship team, I don't feel sorry for you. I stand the whole service, every service. I'm just getting even. I feel no pain, nothing. Yeah, welcome to my world. David, you're one of the finest leaders in worship. I am so proud of you. David, I am, I, I'm, I'm just so proud of you. I'm proud of who you are inside. I'm proud of your wife, how much she sacrificed to come from Toronto. Angela, I love you. Jodanne and I love you. You're a wonderful, godly woman. We're so proud of you. Elaine, you bring joy. Now, I'm always, I'm always fun. And the rest of you on the platform, I'm working on it. Everybody, I'm working on it. A couple of you kind of get on my nerves, but. Uh, Jody Ann, you're on the platform. <laughs> Elder, you put a new heater in here, and it works perfect, doesn't it? It does, it works perfect. Just see, the, you guys hear something, this is a little deep. There's a switch, and on it, it says heat. And if you go up, it says cold. Well, okay, it was a little cold, but how many can say, Pastor, you brought the fire, baby. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah, you brought the fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's so many preachers right now. I say, I'll just give you money. Stop. This is too painful, son. Glory to God. Revival. It's the will of God. I said revival is the will of God. 
Well, how do we have it? Praise him. You got to praise him. Revival lives is fanned by praise. Pray. Come and pray. I'm bringing one of the apostles of prayer through all the Philippines and Asia right to this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What else do we have to do? Give. Give. How many of you, God has blessed you financially? Let's see your hands. Let me see your hands. He's up. Good, good, good. I do not want to pastor a poor church. I want to pastor a rich church. Somebody have fun with me. Put, just put your, your hand on your hip and just say, I go to that rich church. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. I just go to that rich church. Oh, they got the beautiful, beautiful. Hey, this orange is not that bad. I think we're four years away from it coming back in. Hallelujah. Online, e-transfer, 3456 Fraser Street, or you can drop it right off at the church mailbox. Hold your tithe up. Father, I declare we're blessed. Come on, hold it up. I declare it blessed. I, I declare the people blessed. I, I thank you for Jehovah Jireh on all the people right now. Father, I thank you for the blessing of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. I declare your blessing. Hallelujah. Father, your blessing on your people right now. Nothing will be stolen from them. Hallelujah. We return to you. We honor you. We praise you with our giving. Hallelujah. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Let's give to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't help it. It's such a heavy anointing, but I'm fun. Worship team, band, do you feel like you know this song by now? <laughs> you, Vincent, do you know the song by now? You know this song by now? Yeah. Okay, stay afterwards. Whew. We don't want to kill this thing. You're here today, and there's an air of your life that you need a breakthrough. I want to stand with you in faith today. There's no doubt in my mind. Someone say, we need the priest and the prophet. It might be on the throne, but it needs to move. How many can say right now, that's your seat and you have a season pass. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you have an area of your life you need a breakthrough, I want you to, we won't be long, I want you to move out quickly. Come and stand with me. I'm going to stand with you in faith. Hallelujah. And I would do it. I would do it. I'm telling you, I would do it. I would move out right now. Hallelujah. There's an area that you need a breakthrough. Hallelujah. He's the Lord of breakthrough. He's the Lord of breakthrough. He's the Lord of breakthrough. He is the Lord of breakthrough. There's more. Just move out quickly. Hallelujah. Father, we're declaring breakthrough. I'm declaring breakthrough. I'm declaring your word to be true. And there's places, hallelujah, a breakthrough. He's the Lord of breakthrough. And I just want to pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Hallelujah, there's more, come quickly, hallelujah. Spirit of faith all through the house, hallelujah. There's, there are places. This is one of those places. Hallelujah. Those online right now, I just want to have you just put your hands forward by faith right now. All of those around the world that are online, put your hands forward in the name of Jesus right now. We're going to declare the Lord a breakthrough over your life. Hallelujah. Uh, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. We're not going to smell the same. Or we're not going to uh, uh, we're not going to taste the same. Uh, uh, we're not going to have the same. Uh, uh, we're not going to hope, wish, but we're going to see you mightily move on our behalf. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Ushers, you're, you're ready. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, God is so good. Lord, you're so good. Hallelujah. Jesus. And David just 
just to be close to you, Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus. He's here. And he loves me. Say it out loud. He loves me. Just say it. He loves me. Say it. He loves me.
Church, let's stand together. Hallelujah. Let's stand all together. We're going to close. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor your presence. Lord, you're number one. And from this place, from this place, there will be a mighty revival. From this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know how you guys ever could be cold. I'm just sweating everywhere in my body. Between my toes are sweating. Gee, what a... Pastor Gordon, tell everybody this isn't cold here. It's not cold here. <laughs> the Arctic. She's from the Arctic. This is not cold. Peter's going to go to the Arctic here in a couple of weeks. Hallelujah. Uh, tell him he doesn't bring, need to bring a coat. He'll be fine. Come on, everybody. Help him out right now. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We'll try it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, that's not good enough. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. No, 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 no. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Shadabaku Sante. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, David, you're going to help us. We're going to warm this place up. I'm going to give the benediction, and then we're going to go to the left, to the left, <laughs> to the right, to the right. The air will be on. Uh, I love Amazing Grace. They had a tremendous gathering last night with 500 people. It was just beautiful. But I want them to suffer. So we shall have the same temperature at the Amazing Grace service. Somebody help me right now. Hallelujah. We will just like, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, if the team would turn up the heat for our family that's coming. And we, we suffered. We suffered. We suffered. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, everybody. Dr. Leach and Pastor Gordon tomorrow night right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're going to bring it on Davidic worship. You will not want to miss it. And I've asked Dr. Leach to preach on Wednesday night. Come on, everybody. Yell at him. Bring it, baby. Come on. Tell him right now. Bring it, baby. Oh, he's going to preach on Wednesday night. Glory to God. I have not went to the States and preached for two and a half years. And so Tuesday, I'm going to go down and preach at a church. And is that all right, everybody? Will you send me? And I'll go preach. I'll preach on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm going to go over there and preach. And, uh, and no, I'm not moving back to the States. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, some of you complained about Trudeau. Try Biden. <laughs> Try Biden. Hallelujah. Biden just said, Satan, please fill me completely. <laughs> Gee, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, would the team fix the heat for the next service? Would you guys do that for us? Yes? yes. All right. Let me, let me put a, one of the trustees in charge. Should I do that? <laughs> Pastor Shirley, if you really love Amazing Grace, <laughs> this is the time to boss it around. Planted in the house of the Lord, you will flourish in the courts of our God. God bless you. Come on, here we go.